the title of this slide is pancreas pancreas adenocarcinoma is the title but I think I would like to give it the title of every pathologist's nightmare notice that we're dealing with a tissue here that is very glandular notice that in many if not most areas you could see the classical appearance of the pancreas which is a glandular organ with lobules and the smaller things are asini and you can see central acinar cells you can see in many areas uh, interlobular ducts, intralobular ducts. And I think before we start getting into the real meat of it, you could generally see that these are still generally all sort of having a lobular configuration. Notice there's an area here uh, in the central uh, occupying much of it, the organ that has a lot more fibrous tissue and scarring than there should be and the general overall configuration of the labials looks a little bit impaired. This, the reason why I'm calling this a nightmare is because the pathologist then has to decide whether this fibrosis is secondary to an inflammatory process or whether it's being caused by the pancreas adenocarcinoma cells evoking a fibrous or desmoplastic or scurrus sort of response which many tumors do. Well I haven't made up my mind yet and I've been looking at this for a long time. So the place where you want to look to possibly find cancer is not inside of a lobule that looks histologically normal but inside of an area which does not look normal. And even though some of these lobules still sort of maintain a lobular configuration, uh, many of them don't. And if you look in some areas, and here's an example, it doesn't look like these are uh, nice developed asini at all, does it? It looks like they're very irregular. And as an example, I will show you this. I will show you hopefully another area in which they don't really look like asini anymore, uh, disrupted by fibrous tissue, but they may look like little invasive nests of glands. By the way, what is this over here? You know this is a, a fairly normal islet of Langer hands, don't you? But let's keep moving around in this uh, area. And here's another, here's a normal islet or the edge of one. Here's another area that doesn't look like it has good differentiation of, you know, myoepithelial cells, um, central acinar cells, acinar cells. We saw an area here in which the glands look actually quite irregular. And so now the hypothesis is, well, this may not be reacting to chronic inflammation by forming fibrosis. This could be a malignancy. And this case is actually called pancreas adenocarcinoma, but I think it's a lousy teaching case because it's a very difficult diagnosis. I would lose sleep over this one. Here's an islet, here's an islet, here's a sclerotic lobule. We saw a couple areas here which don't look like normal uh, glands at all. They look very invasive and dark. And here's an example of one, and here's an example of one, and here's an example of one. So this is a... Um, adenocarcinoma of the pancreas. The reason why we lose sleep on this is because they can do needle biopsies of these things and you are then obliged to tell the surgeon to yank out the whole pancreas in a six-hour operation that has a 10 percent mortality and if you got the diagnosis wrong the patient has lost half of his guts for nothing. Uh, so you have to be extremely extremely sure 
uh, when you look at these biopsies that it really is cancer. And most of these little irregular, dark, invasive nests here, I think I could convince you are infiltrating adenocarcinoma for all the right reasons, irregularity, invasiveness, pleomorphism, hyperchromasia. But if the needle happened to go, for example, uh, through this area, let's say, you would have to say, well, this looks like part of a normal lobule, and maybe there's a little bit more fibrous tissue than usual. So this could be a very, very difficult call, and this is where experience comes in handy. Thank you very much.